Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a video on creepy stories. Um, I also like to address that uh, on one of my Urban Legend videos, I got a comment saying um, I was, because of how I was doing it, I was either really low or really high for volume wise. So hopefully with my, one of my AirPods, AirPods, in my ear, it helps with the loudness of my voice. Sorry in advance. Um, but real quickly, pause the video. Get yourself a blanket, some snacks, something to drink, whatever. And then come right back. We're going to do some scary stories off of Reddit. These stories are off of Reddit. So it's Reddit is where you can post things. These are other people's stories, not mine. So the two sto there's two stories that I'm going to do. The first one's fairly short and the other one can, depending on how fast or slow I read, can be very long. And they're from Creepy Encounters. And then the other one's from Horror Stories and it's also kind of long, depending on how fast I read. If you tend to read fast, I'm sorry. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay, let's get started. Ikea Creep is what it's called. Not sure how scary this is, but it, this scared the hell out of me. I love Ikea. It's big, just like Texas, which is where my story happened. Everything's also low to mid quality, also just like Texas. I was walking through the marketplace on the first floor when I was approached by a man taller than me, which is most people, I'm sure. Talking about dinnerware, the so section I was currently in. I don't remember exactly what we talked about, Apart from that, but he began asking me personal questions about myself and making conversation. He tried to get quite close to me, which made which made me uncomfortable even before COVID. I like my personal space. Then I walked away to the next sections, thinking he was still there. Then I continued to walk through to the carpets. He's there staring and smiling at me. The lights, he's there. Frames, there. I took a shortcut into the bathroom section. Also, they're gleefully smiling at me and trying to flag me down for another conversation. So naturally, freaked out, I walked to the end of the marketplace where the plants are and think I lost them. Nope, I basically ran to the pickup section where the huge ceilings are and bobbed and wave, weaved bit until I got to checkout. He sprinted to the adjacent checkout and smelled and waved. I told to the I told the checkout manager what was going on and she said she would talk to him. From there, I ran upstairs to the cafe and sat facing the window in one of the, of the coves, trying to hide myself amongst other people. I saw him walking to his car with his cart looking around. For some reason, he fixated, fixated on me and decided to follow me through one of the largest stores I've ever visited. I don't know what he wanted or why he followed me. Ultimately, when I got the out before anything could happen. I called my boyfriend after it happened and said it would be safer to go with him from then on. If there's any mispronunciations while you're in this, I'm reading it word for word. <laughs> so no judgment, but that beware of your surroundings. Um, I think they personally handle the situation correctly. Uh, but especially talking to someone. I know it can be hard to like try to say, I know this one sounds crazy, but I feel like if he's following me, it is safer to say something to someone than not say something. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, this person commented, man, that was a long way to follow you. Good job telling the cashier, definitely the right move. Um, Another person wrote trafficking. I read other stories also from Ikea. Always trust your instincts and be aware of your surrounding at all times. Definitely true. Um, again, just make sure you're aware of your surroundings. But I, I definitely feel like, for me, it's a little creepy because as a woman, we are, m women and children are more, most likely to be targeted for trafficking and kidnapping. So I'm glad she's safe. So let's move on to the next story. It's called Extremely Loud Banging on a Door at 2 a.m. It's around 2 a.m. My girlfriend and I are woken by an extremely loud banging on the entrance door to the building. We live on the third floor. 
as well as our doorbell being rung continuously. Obviously, the banging scared the living hell out of us. After a few breaths, I opened the window and popped my head out to see a woman and a man who is now on the phone by the front door. I yelled out, hello, and the girl says she lives here. The week before, we had just seen a new girl leaving our apartment building as we were entering, and as it was night, therefore dark, and I am on the third floor and I had just woken up, I thought it was her. We figured I should go down and open for her and her boyfriend since my girlfriend was scared as hell and it's better to be a man in the in those cases perhaps anyways my girlfriend was standing at our door listening in case something was to happen i opened the door and let him thumb into the tiny hallway leading straight to the tiny spiraling staircase i move as to let them pass me to make sure they actually live here but they don't budge they stink of alcohol and the guy looks almost homeless based on his shabbiness as well as a big plastic bag hanging from his shoulder. He said he had just moved into the first floor and that he, for some reason, could not open the front door. Also asking if I was Alex, which I was not. The girl who looked pretty normal asked me what floor I was staying on. He was now fumbling with his keys trying to trying them from the inside of the door. I asked them if they can enter their apartment. They don't answer. Suddenly, the guy realizes that he is at the wrong address. Asking if he is at X at x address the girl says she's just with him and did not know almost laughing about it the guy becomes very apologetic apologetic and kind and off they go first thing i thought was that they were drunk and the guy was bringing the girl home and had just messed up the address since he had just moved into a new place even more so because the address he gave me had a similar door to ours thanks google maps it was right down the road across the street, but the building was not the same at all, so far from it. And they did not seem that drunk. The questions that theory is that the girl said she lived here, and then later on said she was just with him. The extremely loud banging, still surprised none of our, my neighbors came out to see what was going on. Though not wanting to go in front of me, not answering me when asked if they can enter their apartment, and then realizing it's the wrong building, the second I question them, and when it becomes obvious, I am not leaving them alone. Him looking like he did with his big bag. Them not looking that drunk. Looking back at it, I should have just talked to them from the window or called the police, but it was pretty far down, and I am not fluent in the language here. So maybe they wouldn't have understood me when it's unclear due to the height difference, and my girlfriend was too scared to walk, talk anyway. Anyhow. And we were pretty sure it was our new girl neighbor, which was why I went to open them in the first place. We'd never have done it otherwise. Yeah. Again, be careful out there. Um, I luckily live in a townhome. So if anyone's banging on my door, I'm calling the police. Um, Because it's not like if everyone's home, everyone has a key to my house. So if there's banging on my door, I'm definitely calling the police. Just saying. Um, one person wrote, yikes. Yeah, those people were up to no good. I'm glad it worked out okay for you in the end. And hopefully in the future, you won't let strangers in your, into your building. Sorry if I stop. And then another one said, when you say off they go, do you mean they left the building or did they stay in the building looking for their room? Where did this take place? It's been a while since I lived in an apartment. Isn't there a room or a phone number to call for someone to come to open her room? She probably could have called that number to be to be let in if she lived there. I hate it when people knock on doors and they get to, to be let in. I never let them in. These are great questions. Um, I'm pretty sure these were scammers definitely they were not they were scouting is what it is they were trying to see if someone would let them in and then leave them alone so that they can either rob a place or whatever i don't know what their plans were but that is definitely what you would call scouting a place they were definitely definitely good and someone commented but off they go i mean that i was there making sure okay so it's just it's the person who wrote the story. Yeah. He wrote, 
By off they go, I mean that I was there making sure they left and closing the door, making sure it was locked. We don't have anything like you're describing. There are just buttons to call the three apartments that are in the building, but you cannot talk through it since it's broken. It's not a fancy, nice apartment building at all. It's just a four-story building with an office at the bottom not connected to the entrance to the apartments. So the fact that even, even the guy says he lives on the first floor, but based off this, it says, uh, it's just a four-story building with an office at the bottom not connected to the entrance to the apartments. So if it says call the three apartments, which means there probably isn't a bottom apartment. There's only three apartment buttons. And it says three apartments that are in the building, which means they were lying to begin with. So be careful, stay safe. That's all. <laughs> okay, so I kind of read halfway through this and I was like, no, gotta turn on my lights. I was freaked out. Like, like, these are, I haven't read these stories, by the way. This one I've read once. Oh my god, partway through another one. Can't do it, light off. So, let's try this again. So, let's get straight. Call a house stuffed with them. The family had bought the house a year ago. Originally, we assumed the house would sell to spawn. But some lousy plumbing above the room, electric, and water spilled out everywhere. The room was drenched and I had nowhere to sleep. Not until my parents suggested the guest room. My dad joked to me and said, Good luck. I can't say that, man. I opened the room and was met with stacks of old boxes and dust. The room had a single bed in the corner. I had closet across the room from the foot of the bed. I moved most of the boxes to the side and cleaned off the dust and cobwebs. The bed was creaky and the mattress was hard. And after some time, I tried to sleep. I tried to sleep. Do you like it? I restlessly moved around on the uncomfortable brick. With every movement I made, the bed frame creaked. And after a while, I finally got uncomfortable until a bed could get me, and I hadn't moved that time. It almost felt like someone pushed against the bed, and again, another long and painful creep sprung up and looked around the roof. My closet door was open, but nothing else was different. It was different, and nobody was there. I again tried to go to sleep. I would have already left that room, to be honest, but okay. As I lay down, I could hear a noise from somewhere in the room. It was a small and repetitive sound. It almost sounded like scratching. I got up again and listened. I could still hear it. It came from the closet, and I slowly got up from the bed and walked to the noise. The, scratchy, the scratching was becoming louder. I grabbed the hanging clothes and pushed them apart. Not, not finding anything inside, I turned around and saw a small mouse go underneath my bed. Simple explanation. We all know what, what is going right. Okay. <sighs> Something simple. I jumped back on the bed and closed my eyes again. Now I could hear footsteps. They were pacing around the inside of my room and the, they became slower and the, they made their way to the bed. I got up again and saw nothing, but I could now hear something faint, a low noise that was somewhere near me. I checked the sides in front of the bed. I checked the other side of the room, but I was sure it. But I was sure it came from the bed. And then I realized there was one place I hadn't checked. So I got closer, the noise came back there. It was breathing. Somebody was underneath the bed. I got on my knees and turned on the flashlight on my phone. I looked under the mattress and found nothing. A small mouse eating something in a few boxes. Thing called not under the bed. There's no such thing as under the bed. 
and there's no such thing as hiding in my closet. There's nowhere to hide in my room, so good luck trying. Okay. Then I noticed something odd sticking out. A small and thin black string. I pulled on it lightly, but it didn't budge. And when I yanked it down, a dark hand quickly came out from the inside of the bedroom under the mattress. I screamed and ran back to my room, hearing laughter behind me as I went to my parents. They immediately called the police and we waited in silence. Let me repeat that. Hearing laughter behind me as I went to my parents, they immediately called the police and we waited in silence. They came and investigated the house. The decayed body of a man was in between the mattress and the frame. In Frank, a crooked smell had been carved into his mouth. He had been there for quite some time, and the police took the body away. The day after I went back to the bed and I touched it, the mattress was now soft and comfortable, like the body had been preventing me from sleeping. So I decided to sleep on the couch for the rest of that week. The house became peaceful again, and the idea of a body in the house became more of a scary story over some time. That was until I adjusted myself on the couch while sleeping one night. I'm scared. Ooh, okay, I heard a loud crack or snap and suddenly I couldn't sleep again. The thought of another body in our couch wasn't something that would put me to sleep. So I checked to put my mind at ease and I wished I hadn't checked at all. And that's where it stops. So either, either someone's coming in during the day and leaving you presents, or they're living in your attic somewhere. And this could be completely made up, but the thought of it being real makes me sick. So. Only one person commented. No, it's a super best. I'm gonna write this one. Thanks, now I can't sleep. Ha ha ha. Um. Yeah, that was the other person. Who commented? Scary, huh? Here, the kind of. I gotta shift. Give me a sec. Okay, to. Anything about the blanket I'm currently wearing. We're gonna read the back of this book. I still haven't finished the book. There's a door to lighten the mood. Let's finish on the back of the book of the Harry Potter. There's a door at the end of the silent corridor, and it's a haunting Harry Potter's dreams. Why else would he be waking in the middle of the night screaming in terror? Harry has a lot in his mind for this. His fifth year at Hogwarts. A defense against the dark arts teacher with a personal personality like poisoned honey, a big surprise on the Gryffindor Quidditch team, and the looming terror of the ordinary wizarding level exam. But all these things tail next to the growing threat of he who must not be named. A threat that neither the magical government nor the authorities at Hogwarts can stop. As the grasp of darkness tightens, Harry must discover the true death and strength of his friends, the importance of boundless Loyalty and the shocking price of unbearable sacrifice. His fate depends on them all. But that being the back of the, the fifth year book of Harry Potter, I'm gonna end the video. So if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a thumbs up. If you're not yet yet subscribed, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification. And if you got scared like I did, let me know down below. And I'll see y'all in the next video.